Hi guys, I'm Dia. I'm the newly appointed textile specialist at Spark Fun, and I'm going to do a quick introduction to Lilypad e-textile technology. Uh, if you've never sewn, but you use electronics, this is a great place to start. If you've never used electronics, but you sew, also a great place to start. Um, this is going to be really basic. I've got a small project that I had already made. This is just a tiny little cross-stitched piece. I'm going to add one light to the flame in the center, uh, a battery pack, and a switch. So we'll be able to turn it on and off from the front without like taking it off the wall. I have two layers of fabric. That's because I prefer to be able to keep my stitching and my components behind the fabric where possible. This way I can keep the light underneath so the light will just shine through the flame. Still have my switch on top and the battery pack on the back. You can't see anything that I don't want you to see, but the light's still going to come through. And you can do that with most light to medium fabrics. It takes a pretty thick fabric for an LED light not to shine through. We've got several threads at Spark Fun. Um, I find two of them more suitable for hand sewing projects like this. Uh, this is our two ply thread. It's very fine, it's very soft, it doesn't ravel too badly. It uh, really lays flat to your fabric. The only problem with it is that it's got a very high resistance, over 80 ohms per foot. So if you're using a lot of thread, if you're going far from your power supply, you're going to lose brightness very quickly and possibly not be able to support as many lights. It is really good if you want to use your sewing machine. This can go in the top thread and the bobbin of just about any sewing machine without a problem. This is our four ply. It's a little bit thicker. You can see that it's going to be more visible on your fabric. It doesn't lay quite as flat. Uh, it does have a much lower resistance, uh, I think 14 ohms per foot. In a sewing machine, I personally haven't been able to use it as a top thread, but I can use it as a bobbin, and I understand that on some industrial machines or tougher machines, uh, top thread might still work just fine. Connective thread is a lot harder to thread than a typical thread because it's stiffer, it frays very easily, um, and it's thick. I'm using the two-ply because I'm not going very far. This is the easiest one to thread. If you have trouble with it fraying, you can use beeswax, which you can get at a craft store, a fabric store, um, or I even in a pinch will use chapstick. I keep it pinched very tightly between my fingers so that I can just see that black speck at the top and then press the eye of the needle into the speck and pull it through. All right, we're gonna start on the positive side of your circuit. So you're gonna take your piece of fabric, if you have one, your back fabric, and your battery holder and you want to align it with the far edge of the fabric. We're going to start on the two holes that have the pluses next to them. That's the positive terminal of your battery holder. You're going to take your threaded needle and push it up through the hole from the back. Pull it all the way through, careful not to tangle it, and push it back through the front. You're going to repeat this several times in each hole so that you've got a good solid connection. This is unlike both sewing and electronics because at the same time as you're attaching the item to the surface, you're also forming your conductive connection. The thread is serving as your wire in this circuit. The next thing we're going to do is attach our switch. This is a really simple on-off switch, so when it's turned on, your light will be on. When it's turned off, it will be off. We're going to put this on the top layer of fabric so that it's easy to turn the piece on and off without having to take it off the wall or flip it over. You're going to take this piece of fabric that you've just sewn your positive side of your battery terminal down on, and the other side should still be loose, and flip it over because it's the back of your piece. Take the front and put it on top. You want to line the positive side of that battery terminal up pretty close to uh, where you want your switch to be. I want mine down here underneath my T, so my positive battery terminal is right here. If you need to, put in just one or two switch stitches to get your thread over to where you want that switch to be. Then go ahead and place your top fabric. Pull the thread up where you want the switch to start. And put the switch on. Now you're just going to secure that switch with a couple of stitches the same way you did both sides of the battery terminal. It's going to be a little bit tougher because you're going through two layers of fabric now. After you've sewn the switch down, it's important that you stop and knot your thread off. You can make a really light stitch through the surface of your fabric so that you've got a loop, and then pull the needle through that loop 
to make a knot that's perfectly flush with the fabric. The next thing we're going to do is sew down the other side of the switch. The reason we've tied off and started again is because if our thread connects one side of the switch to the other, we're going to bypass it and it won't work. The circuit will still work fine, our light will light up, but we won't be able to turn it off when we want to. So bring your newly knotted thread up through the back of your fabric and through that hole in the switch and again stitch it down a couple of times. This time do not knot and cut your thread. The next thing we're going to do is connect our switch to the first side of our LED, which is going to be the positive side, since we're still doing the positive side of the circuit. That will have half of our circuit down, and we'll be able to start the negative side, which will make everything work. So I have my switch, and this has attached my top and bottom layer of fabric. What I'm going to do is lift the top layer of fabric up, and I want to mark where I'm going to put my LED. It's small, I don't need a big mark. I just don't want to lose track of where it belongs. Then, with this fabric pulled back, I'm going to bring my thread back up and keep stitching from the point of the switch to where I'm putting my LED. Try and keep your stitches neat. It's hard with the conductive thread. It wants to fray and knot and spread. But the neater your stitches are, the easier it is to keep your positive side from ever touching your negative side, which is help, helping you to prevent shorts. I'm placing my LED on top of my mark, and just like I did with the switch and the battery terminals, I'm going to pull my thread up through the back into that small hole, which takes a little bit of feeling around, and then down through the front, forming a good connection with the silver pad. Put several stitches in again and tie off and knot your thread. Alright, we're going to start the negative side of our circuit. Uh, we're going to sew down the battery holder exactly the same way we did on the positive side, and then we're going to connect it straight to the LED since we don't need another switch. To sew down the negative side of the battery holder, you're going to repeat what you did for the positive side. To make sure that I don't sew through both layers of my fabric, because I don't want to show the stitching, I'm going to pull this one out and then I'm going to start stitching through these holes. It is very important to note that the entire piece of metal on top of the battery is the part of the positive side. This means that if your negative thread touches this pad here, it's going to short your circuit. So make sure that you're keeping your stitches off to the side and that when you move from one hole to the other, you do it underneath the fabric so that you don't form contact there. I've got three stitches on this side, so I'm going to pass the thread underneath and bring it up through the second hole. None of these stitches have touched the central pad, so I should be fine. The last thing we need to do is connect this negative side of the battery to the negative side of the LED. All we're going to do is bring a row of stitches straight in from where the battery is in the back side of the fabric through to the LED. The placement of my LED has made this a non-issue, but it's important to note that at no point should your positive line ever touch your negative line. Now I'm just going to add a few stitches, connecting the negative side of the LED to the fabric and through the thread to the battery holder. This completes the circuit so we can tie off and cut our thread. It's important that you not leave your thread ends here where you've knotted or here where you've knotted long enough that it's possible for them to touch because that can short your circuit. The last thing we need to do is put our battery in and turn it on and make sure it works. I'm going to take my uh, 20 millimeter coin cell battery, push it into the holder, and turn on my switch. If your circuit doesn't work, 
check and make sure that you've got a solid connection between the battery terminal and the LED on both sides. Also check that your LED is oriented correctly. You should have the positive side of the LED attached to the positive side of the battery and the negative side of the LED attached to the negative side of the battery. The last thing to check for is shorts. Make sure that there is nowhere that the thread or the thread ends connects the positive and negative sides of the circuit and also that there isn't any other metallic substance making a connection, like a needle or a pin. For a finished look on a piece like this, I like to add a frame. You have added a lot of bulk with the electronics, particularly the battery pack, so you'll have to take the glass out. Make sure when you're buying a frame that you get one with a separate sheet of glass and not with an attached piece of plastic. So that's it. It is just as easy as it looks. Hopefully this has demystified the e-textiles a little bit, and uh, I think it should get you started on a lot of projects of your own. If you have any questions, check the website, and we should have more e-textiles tutorials coming soon.